What's up everybody, welcome back to Bullshot Darts. In this one, I just wanna talk about the first darts tournament that I have had in over a year, my summer dart plans, and also some bull chat with Logan Paul versus Floyd Mayweather happening the other day. But first, if you're new and you're looking to improve your darts game, make sure you hit that subscribe button, drop this video a thumbs up, and also follow Bullshot Darts on Facebook and Instagram as well. So I have been playing blind draws since the bars have slowly been opening back up. But now that things are pretty much close to open, now the actual competitive dart tournaments are starting back up, and it feels so good to have darts to look forward to. And I had my first big dart tournament a couple weeks ago. I haven't been, had time to record. Uh, just work got really stressful at the end of the school year. I've been having some problems with my camera setup, but anyway, so my first tournament was a couple weeks ago, a Dart Players of Chicago event. At these Dart Players of Chicago events, and well, they're, they're like in other major cities, like Dart Players Chicago, Dart Players of New York, Dart Players of LA. What that is, it's like the local tour, and you accumulate points throughout the year. At the end of the year, the top, I think it's 16 players compete in the finals, and I believe this is the last year that they're doing this, but the winner gets a cash prize, Wait, I'm sorry, you don't get a cash prize. You get all your CDC events paid for the following year, and you also win your tour card. But from the sounds of it, after this year, I don't think they're going to be handing out tour cards for these, but I don't know. We'll see. But it was the first big tournament that I've had in, well, over a year. <laughs> and these events are all long format 501. So at the blind draws, you know, you're just playing best of threes, cricket, 501 you know, maybe five matches. And so if you play all three legs in all five matches, you're looking at 15 games of darts and you're only throwing, you know, once every four turns, right? So with these long format events, it starts with best of nine, then moves up to best of 11. And I think the finals is best of 13. So it was the most darts I have thrown <laughs> in well over a year because I was there I think for about six hours and it was non-stop throwing darts so I was either playing my match or on the practice board getting ready for my next match the whole time I was there <laughs> the next couple days my arm was so sore but it felt so good because that means that I know that I need to work on my darts endurance because my arm <laughs> I couldn't function the next couple days. And when I when I feel like that, I usually don't practice because I would rather have no practice session than a bad practice session. And the way my arm was feeling, yes, I could stand at the board and throw darts, but I know I would have had a bad practice session because of my arm soreness. But anyways, I'm getting off topic here because I really want to talk about the tournament. <laughs> Because since it was my first big tournament in a while, my mental game was weird. My darts were weird. So <laughs> my practicing before the event even started, I was feeling so good and feeling so confident. All my darts felt good. Um, I wasn't feeling warm, like I had a good body temperature. I know that might sound weird to talk about, but Sometimes I can get really cold and it's hard to throw, and sometimes I overheat way too fast. And this was also a very, very hot Chicago day. But everything was feeling good. So I go into my first match, and my first leg of my first match was a 15 darter. So a 15 darter is basically 100 average. So it's kind of like... You know, if you want to average 100 or more, you have to be getting 15 darters or better to have that average. So 15 darter to start the game or start the match, I was feeling so good. And then it went way downhill from there. I still ended up winning five to zero, um, but the person I was playing against wasn't throwing their best stars. They were, kind, they were having an off day too. And I'm thankful for that because I started with the 15 darter and then I still managed to end the match with a 54 average. <laughs> a 54 average is really, really bad for me. Like if I average a 65 or less, 
I view that as a bad a bad match for myself. The fifties, not even the fifties, but the lower end of the fifties. <laughs> oh man, it was just it was just really really weird, and that had to do a big part with my mental game. I don't know what it was, but I just kind of lost confidence. And I know that sounds weird because my practice was so good, and I start with the fifteen darter. But then I kind of, well, one, I started overheating a little bit. I started getting a little clammy, which didn't help. But I just started thinking like, oh man, like I haven't thrown a big tournament in a while. I'm getting back into it, a 15 darter. And then I was kind of like, we're, I'm, I'm having all these ups. And I just started having this mindset of like, well, it's only downhill from here, which, <laughs> which is not a good mindset to have because at that point, well, I mean, for that match, everything definitely was, well, downhill from there. Uh, I think I even had two legs in that match that were over 30 darts, which is not good. <laughs> so my first match, I ended up winning 5-0 with the 54. And it's funny because a friend of mine, uh, I believe I had to play him the next round. And he played his match before mine. And I think he averaged a 60. And he came back to me um, and he was like, hey, like, See, see if you can keep up. <laughs> and <laughs> so after my match, I had my 54 to go back up to him and tell him like, hey, remember you were joking about that 60 average? Well, I, I got you beat with the 54. <laughs> um, so that was my first match. And I don't remember what happened in my second match, but I think it was my third match where I think I averaged an 86. So my darts were really starting to feel good. And sometimes I just need a, I, I'm usually a, a super fast starter than I slow down. But usually I can close matches, right? It's, it's usually the middle of my game where I have more struggles. Because I'm good at starting a match strong and I'm good at finishing a match strong. I, I don't even know why I'm talking about this, but. <laughs> so it was that match I threw like an 86. Oh, I'm talking about, so like the middle of the tournament. So the middle of the tournament, I shot that 86 or so. And in my mind, I'm thinking like, all right, here we go. Like, I'm feeling good. My hands aren't clammy anymore. I'm over this whole, you know, competitive nervousness that I, you know, I haven't shot darts in over a year. And from there, I thought everything was going to go good. And it didn't. <laughs> my scoring was decent. My outs were decent. But it still just felt funny. And, it's, and it actually is weird because... Overall, I feel like I didn't shoot that well, but I still managed to have four ton plus finishes throughout the day. And there was only seven ton plus finishes the whole event, and I had four of them, which also was the highest ton plus. I had a 135 out in the finals, uh, 25, 60 bullseye for the win. Uh, I had, I think like the second best leg with 13 darts, because I have a 13 dart leg. And highest averages per match, I think I had the third or fourth highest average with that 86 for a match. So it's like that weird thing. I have these really, really good moments where I can take over a game for a period of time. I need to get better at making that consistent, right? So like if I'm in a best of 13, you know, I can start high and I'm down high down high down and i need to do a lot better job of getting that way more consistent i'm going to make a video about that what i'm going to do to try to make my darts more consistent because that's where i struggle most because i do have these really good highs but i also have these really bad lows almost every tournament i go to i know i'm going to hit a decent amount of 180s i know i'm going to have my ton plus finishes but it's just everything in between that. I mean, it's not like it's bad. Well, I guess with that 54, it was pretty bad. But I mean, I usually average around 75 to 80. So even the, the lows aren't too bad. But if I could get rid of those lows and ride that high more, that's where I'll be getting up into the 85 to 90 range. And that's where I know I can be a lot more competitive in the more like national scale. But I don't know it was a fun tournament i'm just kind of going on and on and on i just like talking about darts and i like talking to you guys so <laughs> hopefully i'm not boring you here i played my good friend joe b croft in the semifinals. both of us shot really bad so 
Uh, Joey is also, you know, very well capable of shooting well into the 80s and 90s. And I think our match, I think it was 69 to 66. I think that was our averages. Neither of us deserved to win that game. We both were missing so many shots. Um, anytime one of us would do something good, then the other person would do something good. Whenever one of us did something bad and we had to jump on it and take advantage of it, we failed. <laughs> so we were both having highs and we were both having the lows. And we both had way more lows than highs. <clears throat> Whoa. Excuse me. Uh, but I, I somehow managed to get that one. And then I got to play my buddy Randy Van Dersen in the finals. Those of you that don't know, Randy Van Dersen is a huge darts legend. Uh, I believe I told this story before, but when I first got into playing darts, Randy was a player I watched a lot on YouTube. So after many years of me living in Colorado, I moved back to Illinois and you know, he, he's like a big guy too. So like in my eyes, like he was a larger than life person, like a darts legend. And then the first time I saw him in person, you know, he's like six foot five. I don't know how tall he is, but he's just a big man <laughs> and i was just like holy crap like randy van dersen's here like what is going on and then i found out that he lives like right up the road from me so uh really cool because you know just a guy that i really looked up to i still look up to him uh i mean literally and figuratively <laughs> uh because he's a great shot and he's one player that's really trying his hardest to transition from soft tip to steel tip so i respect that a lot because there's a lot of soft tip players that are like, screw soft tip. And there's a lot of steel tip players that are like, screw soft tip. And we have like this war going on that just makes the growth of darts even harder. But uh, yeah, so I got to play him in the finals. And it's funny because whenever we end up at the same tournament, uh, we always play each other. <laughs> so it was so funny because, you know, we get to the finals and it was just like, well, did we expect anything different? Like, <laughs> here we go. And also it was cool because Larry Butler was there and Larry Butler is the biggest American darts legend of all time. And he was there and he actually stayed and watched the finals match, which I thought was really cool because, I mean, I didn't win and I didn't shoot my best, but like Larry Butler stayed at the bar and watched my finals dart match, which is just awesome. I mean, imagine being a football player and I don't know, Tom Brady, Aaron Rodgers, I don't watch football anymore, so I don't know the big football players anymore. But, like, imagine you're a football player and, like, they're watching your game. It's like, holy crap, this is awesome. And Larry was actually at another tournament. I uh, saw him, I think, like, three times the last week. So was able to talk to him and, like, get to know him. Really nice guy. Um, but, yeah, I think he's leaving town, so I won't see him until he ends up coming back. But anyway, so that was the tournament, guys. First tournament back. Uh, wh when's my next one? My next one is not this weekend, but next weekend. So I'll definitely make sure and hop back on here and well, give an update on that tournament. So I now just want to kind of talk about my summer dart plans. Uh, I feel like there's a lot coming up with everything opening back up. There's just a lot going on. And me being a teacher, I have summers off. So it's just super easy for me to, you know, get out and do things. So... <laughs> Now this isn't a darts related trip, but I'm heading up to Seattle. Uh, my girlfriend's aunt lives up there and she's got some other family that's in the area. So we're going up there and she gave me full reign to pretty much go play darts any night I want. So I'm gonna have fun and check out the Seattle darts scene. I have a buddy out there I'm gonna hit up, Anthony. Uh, Cool guy, I hope I can see him. He was a friend I had in Denver and he, actually, he moved to Seattle a while ago, but. So hopefully find some good dart tournaments up there to throw or some blind draws. Uh, for sure, I'm heading to Nashville. So if any of you guys are going to Nashville for the Music City Classic, you know, it'd be cool to meet some of you guys if you're planning on being there. And Nashville is just an awesome dart tournament because so many good people show up for it and it's Nashville. So you get to play some good darts with some good people and then you get to enjoy the Seattle life at nighttime. So that one's gonna be a lot of fun. I think I booked my hotel like Thursday to Sunday. Last time I think I drove in Friday and drove out on Sunday. So I'll actually be able to hang out and relax there. 
Uh, I'm planning on going to Tampa for the CDC. That's the first event there. I'm still a little sad because it should be in Chicago. We should have three events in Chicago, but they had to switch it to Tampa. And I understand because they had to do what they had to do to make sure that they could get. Oh my gosh, this video is going on for so long. Sorry guys, when I get talking about darts, I just talk. I love talking about darts. <laughs> um, I lost complete my train of thought here. Oh yeah, Tampa, I'm gonna try to make it to Tampa for that because I really want to do everything I can to secure my tour card. I want to make sure I can keep that for next year. Uh, and also, I mean, going to Tampa would be fun and I just want to throw darts. On top of those things, you know, I plan on going out to a lot of blind draws this summer. The Dart Players of Chicago events, you know, we got a lot of those coming up this summer, so we'll be going to all of those. So it's just really exciting because things are finally just opening back up. All right, guys, last thing I said I was going to talk about here is the Logan Paul and Floyd Mayweather fight. Um, this one was interesting. I like Logan Paul, but I love Floyd Mayweather, so when these guys you know, announced that they were going to fight. I was actually excited for it. I know it's a big circus and clown show and all this stuff, but you know, it's all in the name of entertainment. You know, they weren't going in there. Well, maybe Logan was, but Floyd was just going in there to entertain. So from an entertainment standpoint, you know, I was really excited for this. And I will say that the fight just did not live up to the hype. I didn't watch the whole card, so I don't know how the rest of it was, but I heard there was actually really good fights on there. I just tuned in for the, the main event. And I don't want to get into this too much, uh, cause I know you guys probably don't like listening to me talk about non-dart related stuff. And chances are you're probably not even watching the video anymore, but <laughs> cause what are we, we're 16 minutes into this. So pending what kind of judge would judge this fight. So there were no judges. So there no winner, no loser, no nothing. Depending on the judge that would be judging this fight, I very well could see Logan winning, I very well could see Mayweather winning, and I also very well could see it being a draw. In my personal opinion, I would either call it a draw, or I would say that Logan won. Um, the reason why is because Logan was throwing way more punches. He was being a lot more active in the ring. But he wasn't landing that much that many of his punches whereas mayweather was very selective with his punching <laughs> but when he threw a punch he made sure it counted uh so you know like i said so different judges score different things so if you have two fighters and one of them throws a hundred punches and only lands five wait hang on i'm getting confused here they throw a hundred punches and they land five and they, they, they don't even necessarily cleanly land them. Let's just say they get five through versus a puncher that throws 10 punches and con connects with five punches too. I would say a lot of judges would put that in favor of the person throwing 100 punches because they're just being more active. Even though the other person may have connected better with their punches, from an overall round standpoint, uh, I would say the active fighter would win the round because they were just more active and just by visually watching it and that's basically what this fight was about uh, logan was throwing way more punches and missing a lot more punches he did get a good one two in on him which was a, a good a good punch but when mayweather threw his punches he didn't throw many of them but when he did he made sure that they counted because he was hitting logan clean and everyone's so mad like mayweather you were supposed to knock out logan paul and Logan Paul wrecked the fight because he was hugging Mayweather and stuff. And I do agree, but at the end of the day, like Logan is huge compared to Mayweather. So everyone knew he was going to gas. And like I said, I'm a big Mayweather fan. I, I watched the fight more for Mayweather than I, than I did Logan Paul. And I'm a little disappointed in Mayweather because he had a guy who could barely move and just kept hugging him and he couldn't find a way to finish the fight. Now, I know it would take a lot because he's a small guy. He'd have to pepper him up quite a bit. And it would, it would be more of like a TKO as opposed to an actual KO. Unless he managed to get Logan on like the perfect button. But, you know, Mayweather is a smaller guy. So it would take a lot more to knock him out. But I'm just kind of disappointed because with Logan being so tired and everything, I thought that Mayweather would have been able to knock him out. 
But instead, I mean, the whole last half of the fight was just Logan basically hugging Mayweather. And that's funny because that's where all the memes are coming from. <laughs> um, but anyways, that's it for that, guys. This is a long video. I'm sorry. Sorry, I rambled way too much about darts. Uh, what is that? A 138. We'll, we'll throw one more round see what we can end this video with. If you guys stuck around to the end, thank you so much for watching, guys. I got a lot more videos coming up uh, now that I got my equipment back. As you can see on my shirt, I got this little guy here. I got some big things in the works. Uh, so, yeah, let's see what we can end this video with here. Oh, I already messed up the 180. It's funny, when, I talk and, when I'm talking and throwing, I'm hitting a lot of triples, and the second I actually try to zone in, I completely miss. All right, anyway, guys, thank you so much for watching. I'll see you in the next one. I think that's pretty much all I have to say. I'm starting to sweat. It's getting really hot in here. I got to turn my AC on. All right, guys, shoot well. I'll see you in the next video.